It's the 84th episode of Seti Bimko and Woo! the 34th of Seti Bimko Part 2 The Revenge. And later Closing we're going to watch in. 1987's Rotor. I pronounce it Rotor. Oh, that's how you say it? Rotor. <laughs> Wait a minute. I said R-O-T-O-R every time because it's an acronym. It is. I said it like yeah. that while I was watching it and talking to myself. Mm. Also... Yeah. We answered the age-old question, did Franklin uh-huh. Roosevelt ever get revenge on the Secret Service for giving him the code name Soggy Buttercups? And, and and Eleanor, you know, hers, they gave her the name. What was hers? Gravy Muncher. I don't know what that means. But... <laughs> that sounds filthy. <laughs> All right. That sounds very, that's probably the dirtiest joke we've ever told in <laughs> Seti Bimco. It's Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge. The show where we create revenge sequels that nobody wanted. Seti Bimko, part two of the revenge. <laughs> I'm back. And let me pick, you know, what we do, what do we do every day? We pick out of a jar. Every day, because we record, <laughs> Black people realize this, we only air one episode a week, but we record every day. This is the best one we get each week. I'm but off. Tim is going to reach inside, because I know Kevin Kablas was this year, so I assume it's a bedpan. You're going to oh. reach inside a bedpan and pull out a random number. And this number is going to correspond to a list, and this list is going to determine <laughs> which character from the movie we're going to talk about was most likely to do this thing. And what is the number, Tim? Number 34, the character from Rotor, most likely to name their child Joe Bob Crabtree. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> listeners, every single ep- every single prompt is inspired by Boggy Creek. Go back and listen or, to our previous Boggy Creek episodes. Don't listen to Boggy Creek. Wait, what is the one we watched Return most recently? To Boggy Return. Creek. Don't watch Return to Boggy Creek. That movie sucks. But, but watch Boggy Creek 2, The Legend Continues, or The Legend of Boggy Creek. Both A plus Seti Bimco efforts. Yeah. I so what is the name of the child? One. What what crab tree? Bobby Joe? Yes, Bobby Joe, exactly. Bobby Joe. Okay. Oh, and yeah, George, you're back. Yeah. Kevin, I'm back. Kevin, because it's been a couple weeks. Week. I was away. Um, should yes. I say why? Uh, if it's interesting, you're it's just... not secret. Secret mission. No, I was. Uh, <laughs> my day job of being a New York Times bestselling uh, author and illustrator, which we haven't mentioned for a long time. No. Uh, it got in the way. I had to do stuff. Okay. I was doing signings. I was selling books that the New York Times track, all kinds of stuff. So I was away for a bit. And Kevin Cabasto filled in. Tim, honestly, what? how was he? <laughs> well, he smelled good. He smelled... Oh, I actually am noticing He's... in the Seti Bimco studios he... that there is a distinct aroma of sage. I thought maybe he was, you were getting rid of his bad vibes. Maybe it was just his personal funk. No, he, he, he turned me on to a new app. A new app called Ooh. S- Smell-O Person. And so if you... If you <laughs> so, so it's called, oh, it so releases it's the smell of people from the phone that you're talking to. <gasps> Wow, what, what is my odor when you look me up on Smello person? <laughs> well, you didn't join yet. Can't trick me. Oh, I, yeah, right. I figured, though, that as a New York Times bestselling author, they would have just quantified that for me already. <laughs> Smells like a pile of money. Yeah, Kevin Gublasso, he's pretty good. Secret, pretty good. Secret uh, Service code names him Toothy Lunker. Now we know. Toothy Lunker? <laughs> yes. It's weird. It's weird. His name is, like, longer than Gablasto. Right. Yeah, I guess they're not really oh. going for brevity of names, though. Oh. Yeah, what, Tim? What, I asked, what, what? I asked him this, and I want to ask you this. Mm-hmm. Neither okay. now, neither of us care that there's a new Frasier show. I don't care. But did you know there's a, yeah. there's a new yeah, Frasier show? Yeah, I think show? we've actually mentioned it. We probably have tape of me talking about that. Oh. Didn't we? I, th- I just I thought I talked about it with... Well, I didn't ask you this question. I watched okay. the first episode because I was curious. Oh, I didn't know it was out. I was Yeah, I was curious. He moves back to Boston. That's the premise. And they go to a oh. bar, and it's not Cheers. And I'm like, why wouldn't he go to Cheers to see people? Oh, that's <laughs> so, outrageous. Yes. I, I said to Kevin, did Cheers burn down? Did, you know, I put forth my, uh, you know, did Sam stab everybody? You know, Probably. And he said Carla, uh, she'd be the one to stab people. Yeah, that's almost certainly true. Like, didn't she, <laughs> wasn't it kind of, <laughs> like, what? hinted strongly in the show that she killed her second or third husband? <laughs> I don't remember that. I think that was. We um, saw all the who husbands. From, who from Frasier returned? Is Niles there? Nope, nobody. Couldn't nobody. get Niles. He moved back. Nobody. His He's moved in near his son, and his son is like his dad. He's a fireman. He's like, oh, mm. you and your fancy ways going to Harvard. So there's your concept. His son is his father now. 
because that actor well, died. So yeah. The father. And you know what? I figured the, the show dog, would just pick dog. up. He would just be his corpse in a in a chair. <laughs> the dog is dead too. Want to get <laughs> his corpse? All... His corpse in a chair. Yeah, that'd be you interesting know, for you. You know, it's an evergreen <laughs> statement for everything we've done on, on Dennis Eddie Boko. The dog is dead. <laughs> or the cat. I don't think there was any dogs in tonight's movie. Rotors, but if there were, they're dead now too. Rotors, <laughs> I said. I pluralized. Rotors. It. Heaven forbid. That would have been the sequel, which never got made, but was so clearly set up. Yes. But we will make sequels tonight, won't we, Tim? We will. Revenge sequels that nobody asked for, because that is the Seti Bimco way. Yeah, it's become popular in Australia and Germany we for some a, reason. A lot of fans in Germany yeah. and England. Do you th- hmm, that's interesting. That is interesting. Yep. What do all three of those countries have in common? I guess they I like revenge. <laughs> they like revenge. So, oh, Tim, okay. you actually Sorry. sent a you sent a revenge sequel, a, a revenge news story. What? Oh, another yeah. thing that we do on this on this podcast, um, dear listeners, is we try to cover lighthearted stories of revenge, which <laughs> turns <laughs> out is hard. Yeah, most stories of revenge are not lighthearted. Are you going to? Pick- I myself looked for one this week, and like, I mean, there's a lot of terrible things happening in the world that are revenge driven, so that came up a lot. I did find one of a woman who basically was using sending spoilers to a guy that spit on her friend at a club for oh. like decades, but <laughs> like literally it was decades. decades. Wait a minute. How do you send spoilers for decades? For social media is only, well, she started, she found like, okay, I'm going to recapsulate this. It was a, such a poorly written article though, that okay. I had to actually find a secondary source to understand what was happening. All right. So she, this is like in the nineties, she and a friend are in a comedy club and her friend sits up from their chair their chair is knocked over onto the gentleman sitting behind them he's not a gentleman he's a pig <laughs> spilling his drink and this guy oh. flips out yelling obscenities and spits on the friend Ooh. and the two women are like as they say in the article well we moved on but we didn't move on because they had a good <laughs> night but then through various context clues the author of this this prank found this guy on facebook by decades, it was like 15 years, apparently. She's oh, doing. That's, okay. That's a okay. decade and a half. Wow. She remembers. And yeah, and through various choice and chance encounters and stuff, kept making different, kept finding out this person's usernames, like on Reddit and stuff. They, they I guess they were in the same general circle of friends, but not really. Uh, enough like, to steal passwords? Enough that they were like, they went to the same <laughs> school, so they were able to find, not passwords, like, co- oh, I, I said oh, passwords? No. Uh, like, usernames. Usernames, so I thought, oh. Yeah, and then, yeah. then using various different dummy accounts she created, she would send this person spoilers for all the hot TV shows of the day that she knew that he was following What's from her, his social media. Was her fake name Toothy Lunker? Or? It was it was Toothy Lunker, which is ironically, <laughs> okay. of course. Tim's new thing, by the way, is just come up with weird names like that. It was Hattie Clankers, wasn't that no. one? Or it's... Gravy Gravy Muncher. <laughs> gravy Muncher, that's another. No, you did another episode. Like it's just the thing I have learned about this, like I've known you for decades now, Tim. Okay. Uh I it's the it's the way stuff gets in your brain and percolates there. But it does. I know. It, t- it takes it sometimes takes months to get your system. Like if somebody goes through like the SETI Bimco Ouvre <laughs> and they start with the early episodes, like there's so much talk of mod. Mod, right. And yet mod never comes up anymore. Because it no. took you about 40 episodes <laughs> to get it out. But you system. exercise that mod demon. You got yeah. it out of your system. Now we're we're definitely in the throes of the Hattie Clunkers or Monkey Lunkers, <laughs> whatever thing is going on. That's gonna be happening. We're gonna be stuck in the regional naming stuff. Yeah. You like coming Crab up with tree. nicknames like an Iowan nicknamer in a Saskatoon name. No, no, fest. don't bring that back. I'm done with that. Oh, you are? Okay, good. That one's gone. <laughs> Dodge that continue boy. with your story. Uh oh, the story with her? That's just the story. Oh. She spent 15 years to spoil movies and TV guy. shows or books or whatever, anything. I don't think this guy read. Okay. Uh just just TV shows, apparently. She spoiled and reruns. She apparently of made... She's the sheriff. That sounds like what she, you oh, watched. Oh. Poor one out for Suzanne oh, Summers. I'm just sorry. Died. Sorry. She, I don't I didn't like that Monster. show, but I'm sure she was a nice person. Yeah. I never I'm saw sure the show. Wasn't. I never saw that show. Do you ever see it? It was actually her being a real sheriff and she was evicting people from their homes. <laughs> yes. See, she's one Monster. episode she shoots a kid in the face. Pick another show. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, she was spoiling reruns of uh, Three's Company. That's what he'd watch all the time. No, they specifically mentioned what some of the shows were. I don't remember what they are. Mm. I imagine knowing what they said about the guy, it's probably episodes of Entourage. Oh, shit. Turtle gets the gang in trouble. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she did this for 15 years and then did uh, 
a TikTok video about it that went viral. And then various commentators Ooh. online said, this is funny, but if the roles were reversed, this was a man doing it to a woman, it wouldn't be funny. Mm-hmm. And so they tried to make an article about it. And gotcha. the article, as I said, was so poorly written they failed. that there was some weird mention of her breaking off the engagement. I'm like, wait, was she engaged to this guy at some point? Uh, and sure enough, some friend of hers was. And apparently this helped break up the relationship. So pretty uh, serious stuff, I guess. Uh, yeah. And, you know, folks, this is another thing Seti Bimco is good for. Coming to hear my half-remembered and half-read <laughs> you, recitations you didn't of what me. happens in revenge news stories. You didn't send me the link, so... Nah, because it was a bad article. Okay. I want to talk about the one you sent. Oh, I was just going to skip it. Save it. Oh, okay. Unless you have something to say. It's free. I, about, oh, it's, it's pretty it's, good, it's pretty it's good called, practice, though. I'm trying to say it's free speech. <laughs> it was just Thanksgiving base, but if you have nothing to say, it was just a pretty... Nah, I got nothing to say. It was a pretty, Is this... pretty, what's he call, what do you call it? Um, What's that word for secretly, Benign? secretly cruel or oh, what's that word? Cru- secretly cruel. Secretly cruel. It's basically Machiavellian. Should we skip it? I don't know. Yeah, let's skip it. Let's cut all the sounds. All trash. <laughs> cut out. Start the podcast now. I do. I wanted to complain about the the, the new season of British Baking Show though. Mm, There's a new oh, season. Wait. I wonder if you have the same complaint I do. <laughs> I it's think your they're complaint. they're overdoing this whole like let's giggle about sexual jokes. Is that what you're going to complain about? No, I was going to complain about one of the contestants. Okay. Well. Okay. We'll get to him or yeah. her. But. You're right. They got, I mean, this year, like, it's like they're purposely, I think they're going out of their way to find baked goods that contain the word <laughs> balls in it. Well, the woman, no spoilers, but they made animals. A woman made a beaver. And yep. Paul Hollywood's like, tell us about your beaver, Linda. And ah. Taste it. And like, beaver's a little dry, Linda. And, you know, it's just. Yep. And there's one where, like, they're doing, like, balls. He's like, and Prue, the distinguished, yeah. genteel, upper class British woman is like i could picture your balls in my mouth i'm like guys <laughs> that's literally a lie I'm i know i know you know what my problem is uh, maybe we should cut this part out what? <laughs> i feel like the lady did you see the most recent episode mm, but where a lady she fell ill yeah yeah i think she was full of shit oh uh yeah i think she's i think she's lying i think hmm. she, well here's what the controversy it's, i think I, you know, but she's a head. She was, she was. Yeah, but I think she's the sort of person that gets very disheartened and quits when stuff gets hard. Hmm. A lot of people are on Lauren Mercier too. Like, I'm just saying, I've watched a lot of episodes of the Great British Baking Show. I've never seen anybody go home sick like that. Yeah. It was just kind of like, it just, Hmm. it rubbed me the wrong way. Let me just say that. And and I'm not talking about the balls in Prue's mouth. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Then there's that contestant, Richard. Like, he's always sweating, so they call him Sweaty Dick. They call him he sweaty dick, he yeah. fainted and he fell into Linda's beaver cake. And Paul's like, "Ah, oh, sweaty dick in your beaver, Lindo. What's going on? And there's and that like, other guy no, give up. who walks on his hind legs yes. all the time. And they call him erect penis. Because, <laughs> yeah, because his name is Paul Ness, but he's always standing up tight. So he's erect penis. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They're getting yeah. carried away. Yeah. <laughs> this is good stuff. But we have a great podcast. Then, Everybody. then came the cream pie contest. and. <laughs> They made the <laughs> pearl necklace wedding cakes. Yeah, what else? What else? Did? <laughs> Klaus, Keep going. Klaus made that Hitler cake. No. It's back. Okay. All right, I'm leaving the podcast, everybody. Let's I hope you the... enjoy your new permanent host, <laughs> let's, Kevin Cablasta. Let's go to the movie. I picked this. Now, Rotor. Yeah, you did, Tim. So, and I'm it's glad. Pronounced, it's pronounced Rotor. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You say that like a Masters of the Universe character. <laughs> Rotor, evil servant of Skeletor. Should I give the synopsis or you want to say something? You're about to tell me. Nah. Oh. I, I mean, the only thing I have to add is that this is, I feel like what we have been doing with you is going <laughs> on a regional tour of the United States with like, it's like you choose a lot of movies where it's like, like we did the Psychotronic Man, first movie shot in Chicago. Chicago. You did uh, that movie about bike girls shot in florida it's like it's like i've said ever marked this before most of the time in movie history you see what's happened in new york and california yeah. and you don't see the rest of the stuff no but tim you were you were bravely going out and finding like hey what was happening in in what part of texas is this even it looks like dallas i think it is dallas yeah yeah i could tell exactly i think it literally said dallas 
What is happening in Dallas filmmaking wise in the mid eighties? And now we know, we oh. know Rotor was happening. And, and Dallas, the show Dallas. I don't think that was filmed in Dallas. Okay. <laughs> oh, I think that was filmed in controversial. Dallas. I know. <gasps> if it is, that's ridiculous that that was being filmed at the same time as this thing. But anyway. Well, I'll, g- I'll give a quick synopsis for our listeners at home. All right. Scientist and police captain, Dr. Barrett C. Cold Iron. Ridiculous. <laughs> develops a prototype police robot he dubs Rotor for robotic officer tactical operations research or reserve. Oh, as- wait. And I'm going to interrupt you now yeah? because you just provided me the perfect segue. So, yeah. I have a list. Oh, you made a list? As you pointed out, that this name, the movie, it's an acronym, Rotor. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even decide if it was Robotic <laughs> Officer Tactical Operations Reserve or, or Robotic Officer Tactical Operatives Research. Okay. So what I actually did was I came up with another couple things, no, three things actually, ah. that Rotor could stand for. I'm excited. The acronym. You ready? Because this, this, is, this is a good derailment I'm doing This here. does not hurt me. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, it could also be called Robots of Texas on Rampage, Rotor. Huh? Yeah, it like applies. It. I like applies, it. Yep. Um, <clears throat> uh, Robocop or Terminator, only rotten. <laughs> that kind of describes the movie. It it's does. Just, yep. <laughs> Good one. And uh, I got this one. Uh, this one, you have to work <laughs> with me. One of the words is a little bit of a cheat here. Rather out of shape, that officer robot. <laughs> rather out of shape what out of shape was one word that officer robot just like oh because yeah i mean this is a the rotor the robot is a killing machine a cop we literally see his exoskeleton like for an extensive sequence his exoskeleton has a pot belly because the yes. actor playing him it just looks i mean he really did look like a cop he had a pot belly and a mustache <laughs> and then i even have a uh i have a final bonus one which is kind okay. of like uh, this is like the infinite loop I think Rotor probably really stands for revolving, oscillating, turns over Rotor. <laughs> and you just keep going. You just keep going. Oh, you keep saying rotor, it? it keeps going. It keeps oscillating. It keeps turning over. It's internal. Re- revolving, oscillating, <laughs> turns over Rotor. Revolving, oscillating, turns over Rotor. Yep. Yes. Yay. Man, I love this new power of this making to him. <laughs> yeah, I know. You showed me. It's just... I like that we are now, we're 20 minutes into this podcast. You haven't gotten more than one <laughs> sentence into this because you, yeah, it's what? just the power. I like it. The power. All right, good, good. So let me read the last word of my sentence before you do it. <laughs> right, let's, let's do it. Let's finish this thing. <laughs> they developed Rotor as part of a vision to purpose, preserving peace in a chaotic future, which seems to be 1987, though. In 1987, <laughs> was this movie from 1987? Yeah, yeah, because I this was uh, you were happy. There was virtually no evidence this was the future. It was pretty hilarious. <laughs> Some of the names of this movie: we got our star Brett Cold Iron, his girlfriend Penny Gale, his boss Bulger, B- <laughs> Bugler. I thought it was Bugler. B- Bugler. Yeah, and Dr. Corrine R. Steele, who helped develop this robot. Man, so, the and, names in this fucking turd of a movie. Oh, and Willard the Robot, my favorite character. Of course he was. There was so much, like, I don't know. My notes are really bad for this movie. And unfortunately, you know, Tim's always after me to watch these movies well in advance. And I did. I watched this. We're recording on a Thursday. I watched this like a Monday or Tuesday. Man, well, broad, a lot sticks to you with this movie. Broad strokes. <laughs> it's going to be very broad strokes. Broad strokes. All right. <laughs> We open. So uh, in it, my notes, it does. It is Dallas. I actually wrote that down. It says yeah. it's the Dallas of the future. And it starts. It's one of those movies that starts with a scene from what would be the end of the movie. Yep, just like Equinox, a much better film. Yeah. So it starts with some a couple going for a quiet weekend at a lake, and they uh, see an explosion. And well, they hear the explosion. Let's, <laughs> let's set realistic okay. ideas of the budget here. They, they saw smoke after we hear a big explosion. And it's a very messy opening. They jump out of their car and there's someone who's been shot. Or uh, something. Yeah. And uh, a guy is carrying oh, that's a right. woman. Sorry. And it's cold. You iron. can't really see what's happening. It, it turns out it's cold iron. It took me a surprisingly long time to figure that out. Mm-hmm. And... 
There's a weird bit where he's like, can you call an ambulance? Yeah. And somebody else is talking and they're like, this guy just killed a cop. And like suddenly there was this like yokel with a yep. shotgun there who I don't oh, think man. appears elsewhere in the movie. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He lives and out. And I was like, what's happening? <laughs> then we was. cut to th- this movie also was really funny about giving date stamps. Did you notice this? <laughs> yeah, I know. I was recording them at first. It's like, OK, this is probably important. It says Friday, 7.30 p.m. None of this is important. No, it's not. It's just... I know. I know. Later, they'll, <laughs> they'll give this time that she called to help. Anyway, cut that. Yeah. <sighs> oh, was, that, was that a joke that didn't happen? Nope. Nope. No, it wasn't. Like it's it was just me. Yeah. Um, so he gets arrested. They take him downtown, tell him to buckle up. There's a, oh, yeah, they mention I, a, a Barrett cold fire, which I didn't. they didn't identify him as. And honestly, no. he's in the room being interrogated. And I honestly, because I knew this was about a guy building a robot cop, mm-hmm. I thought the dude interviewing was Barrett Coldfire. Cold Iron. Part. Cold Iron. Oh, Cold man. Iron, man. Yeah. And Cold what, Iron. Who? Come on. Who dubbed Who this wrote the, the two robot people are named Cold Iron <laughs> and Steel? Yes. <laughs> it's. They were given oh, code man. names by the, by the Secret Service. That would have yeah, made more sense. It was going to be Starlight Sugarfoot, but this is what they came up with. Not Clanky Clankers? <laughs> no. Should we give a description of Barrett Cold Fire, Cold Iron? Oh, I'm going to keep saying Cold Fire. What is that? He's dubbed badly. Everybody's dubbed badly. Uh, did you catch even? It's not even the original actor doing the voice. Ooh, no, I didn't see that. Yeah. So he's a muscle yeah, guy. ridiculous. And like, maybe we should play a clip of it. Or I could try it. Okay. He kind of delivers all his lines in this kind of constipated thing like this. No matter what he's saying, hey, listen to me, Bugler. It's me, Cold Iron. <laughs> You can't take the robot away from me because I quit. It's like, yes. it sucks. Good. Say, you know, I hope they brought the hydrogenated wheat German desiccated liver this time. You just can't get it anywhere like in L.A. And this is when I texted Tim. Who is talking? <laughs> <laughs> so he starts to tell a story, and that's why we, we see the movie. Yeah. We cut to a farm. Mm-hmm. We're told it's uh, 5 a.m. Country music. I'll sing some country music. I was like, George, country music. Yeah, you're excited about that. Can I ask you a question about, because at this point we know it's the future, and we've seen almost nothing that indicates it's the future. Like, nothing. there was maybe in the beginning when they were showing the Dallas, like, cityscape, they maybe put some, like, laser colors on one building. It was really shoddy. Oh, but George, but, he has a coffee yeah. machine that makes coffee on its own. Well, that's so, I think this is actually the what I, that's close to us asking. <laughs> there were some things like they show his alarm clock and it makes a rooster sound. Yeah. And I'm like, is this the future? <laughs> like, was this actually a technology that we were like, in the future, they'll have robot roosters. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it was. Yeah. It, yeah. Did, I couldn't decide if that was actually a future thing. I think he just collected uh, rooster clocks. Well, he lives on a farm. That's, yeah, he lives on a farm. And alone. this farm has nothing futuristic about it except for maybe the coffee machine and the rooster. And he takes carrots out of the fridge. And I thought, what? You're eating carrots for breakfast? What kind of Texan are you? <laughs> he sure does. But then he brings them to the horse. And I'm like, oh, you're going to give him the horse. But no. What does he give the no, horse? No, he does not. What does he give the horse? Did you see? I don't know, actually, what he gave the horse. His coffee. He left the oh, horse I drink just... his coffee. It's fucking weird. <laughs> There's no sound during this portion because, like, this whole movie was dubbed after the fact. But as it was originally filmed, he's also clearly having a conversation with the horse. <laughs> like, so you see, he's, he's holding up the coffee. He's, he's holding his, he's affably talking, apparently. I, I couldn't read his lips, but he was saying something. You know what happens if you give coffee to a regular horse? I imagine the most nightmarish <laughs> diarrhea imaginable. That's, yeah, that's the shit it's like a racehorse. Like, Tim, that was actually pretty good. Way to go, Tim. Then Cold Iron is blowing up trees. He's talking about his farm, right? Like how he he farmed this land. and like... Yeah, well, when, we should mention, because this, I guess, is plot important. So yeah. he works on a farm, and like I said, there's not really much to show us the future, but this one thing. He's uh, he's lassoing a tree, and yeah. his, his voiceover narration says something about primer cord explosion lets me practice roping while blowing the stumps away. I forgot all so about basically, that. Yeah, the actual rope mm-hmm. is an explosive. It doesn't connect to dynamite or something. It's just like a, it's like a normal rope and it explodes. Now, I do want to point out also, because this was a really poorly made movie. Yes. We see him lasso a tree, which is not exciting. No. The tree, there is an explosion, and the tree is definitely still standing. 
Oh, I didn't notice so that. So he's talking about blowing away stuff. It's like, you didn't blow it away. <laughs> like, he maybe chipped. It's a dead tree, too. It's not like it was. It, he chips the bark. <laughs> so that makes me That's going to become important later. That's foreshadowing. Because yeah. I realized there was only one bit of foreshadowing before, and now I know there's two. Because the other bit of foreshadowing yeah. is some racist uh, Native American stuff. That. These are the only okay, two yeah. things. Well, Tim, that's just going to show you this is a really great movie. It is. <laughs> Scott. He, he, go, he drives into tactical operations. You want to get there? Yeah, let's do that. Where he says, it's hard to tell the boys from the toys. I yeah, know. I have that exact line written down. <laughs> he also says, uh, 10 years ago, they funded the, D- the Dallas Police Technical Operations Lab to create an invincible police force. I'm like That sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> it does. <laughs> And and the movie really wastes no time in showing us what a terrible idea that is. Invincible police force. Oh, somebody, we... I have this note written down. I don't know who says it. Somebody says, welcome to Big D. And I giggled and wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, I don't know what it means. He's, he's going to go on to work on the, the British baking show. Oh. <laughs> Today we're Bring up your salty, Big D, hairy Walter. Bowls. Big D. Mm, oh, I like it. I like See, it. You like it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. And we meet Willard. He's a funny robot. He he looks like a an out, like, like a robot today. Like just like a well, big a big thing that's on wheels. Yeah, he looked like he at first I wrote down Dorsey from the Jetsons. Yeah. He's on wheels. He has like a video, a very primitive video display face. Mm-hmm. He wisecracks. He's hum he he's comedy relief, anywhere, I guess. like in LA. Um we jam and desiccated liver, sir? Uh, what for? For my handball game, son. Keen reflexes? Super endurance. Handball. Shoot. I got your handball game right here, pal. And he wears an actual police cap. That, yeah, you know, which is, well, <laughs> stuck he's a security head. guard, I guess. He's... Yeah. Did you think watching this that he was going to be somehow connected to the cops? I was hoping because it's the only part of the movie I could even enjoy. It's yeah. him. <laughs> his stupid jokes. Yeah. <laughs> he, he wants his assistant, his assistant's french fries. I'm like, are you just joking or are you... He makes a lot of weird. He, he definitely talks to be about, an annoying robot. Yeah, he talks about eating. He talks about breathing. Talks about pooping. He seems He's to be like, fully intelligent and alive. Goodbye. Right. That's how he leaves the movie, right? <laughs> yes, I have and to. it's weird because, like, <laughs> off camera, you just hear like the most vile noises for like five minutes, where he presumably is doing it. Cold iron gave me coffee. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a meeting where Cold Iron's talking to some people. <laughs> Which I couldn't write their lines down fast enough. I hope you guys <laughs> no. Yeah, I was running. I like so the way I watch. I watch it on my desktop, and I have to like pause it each time because you know I don't have a remote for it. And I'm like, there's just too much. That's why I kind of gave up. There was so much ridiculousness. Um, I have some. I thought I had some so too. So he shows them the chassis for what will be Rotor, which mm. he made. This is the first time we hear the mention of. We don't meet her, Doctor Doctor Steel, and I was just like. I think I threw my pen and I was like, good Lord, really cold iron and steel. Fuck you. Um, so the combat chassis, it's, it's probably the best special effect in the movie. Cause they actually hired someone to do some stop motion of like a skeleton. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of standing from a black screen. I don't know if it was supposed to be on a screen or it was supposed to be in a, the corner of the room. Yeah. And it's doing like calisthenics and like bending over backwards. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm not <laughs> no, joking. Rather <laughs> when I say it has a pot belly. It's a metal yeah, skeleton yeah. and there's a big plastic stomach on it, like a see-through plastic stomach. I'm like, that's funny. Well, back then, that's how big the batteries were. <laughs> uh, and it let's could, see. It the could combat do chassis. yoga or tai chi. Is that what I, I got down? Did you get that one? Yeah, I, it could do judo or tai chi. Yes. And then another guy says something like yoga. and like They keep saying all these things to do, so it's literally doing yoga and tai chi, I guess. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, it also, it's made of a weird alloy, the metal learns. Yes. They're like, how does it They're move? Like, There's no tubes. <laughs> He's like, that's because the metal itself learns. He he makes and up so much shit. He just makes up stuff to every question. It's just such <laughs> such bad science. And I think we need to mention what Dr. Cold Steel looks like at this point. <laughs> yeah. Because maybe you're picturing like a cyborg himself with the name. Maybe you're picturing distinguished older gentleman. I'd say the guy's like in his like 40s or 50s, very blonde hair that's kind of a little bit too long, swooped back. Yeah. Um turgid and expressive face he's he throughout this meeting he's wearing sunglasses he's it's inside 80s dream doll <laughs> he, uh he's very he's very stocky mm-hmm. um but he's like 
He he's and he talks like this, like I mentioned. But I guess in <laughs> some way he represents some sort of bygone idea of what a Texan future male would look like. I know because he's definitely no accent. He's the cool guy. And they say something to him. He goes, "Now you're on my wavelength." Yep. And he continues. <laughs> Yeah, just so much. I, I uh... one of the uh, and he's describing everything that this invincible cop will do, the combat chassis that will be rotor. <laughs> and this one guy, with this mustache is like, who are we in, in relation to these two? I don't know. Wait, who are we to create such a thing? Are we heroes and villains? Yeah. And the guy's kind of like, I don't think we make enough money to be heroes. <laughs> what? Really? Like, oh. Yeah. You didn't, didn't catch that line. I didn't hear that. Oh man. And then I wrote my uh my my big criticism. I just wrote this guy has a dumb face. <laughs> Come at me. It's totally true. Uh so this meeting that uh filled us in on Rotor, he gets called away because Boogler, his boss, is calling. Does the robot come tell him or the man? Anyway, it doesn't matter. He goes to know. he goes to talk to his boss and a senator has has obviously funded this whole rotor thing, and basically he wants it up and running in sixty days. And Cold Iron's like, "No way, I don't we take shit do from We're talking nobody." Five years. Yes. <laughs> well, it it turned the the guy. I wasn't sure. I felt like Bugler was a senator because he was talking about elections and stuff. No, I think he's so, his. I read about it. it. He's his boss, and he's beholden oh. to a senator who could fire him if he doesn't come through. Oh, okay. Because okay. so that's what it comes down to is basically like the guy Bugler, this boss guy, explains to um, Cold, Iron. Uh, Cold Iron how like every single person at every single step of the appropriation level for the funding for this project has been stealing lots of money. Yes. And the reckoning's coming due, so they need to have this thing running in 60 days. And they have such Whereas a long... he just finished his thing. <laughs> They have such a long running conversation. It's like, this, oh, it's this so is long. the senator's holy grail. You need to finish it, Cold Iron. And I, I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't write fast enough. They had such a long conversation. And Cold, Cold Iron says, "I texted this to you. You fire me, and I'll make more noise than two skeletons in a tin coffin." <laughs> and Boom yeah. was like, "God damn you, Cold Iron!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that was the last straw. <laughs> it wasn't. It was Tim. I don't think it was just two. Skeletons in a tin coffin, wasn't it? Two skeletons making love. In oh, a tin making coffin? love. T- sorry. Yeah, it's not just it. laying there. These these skeletons are getting the bone on. Yes. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. Slow down. What do you think yeah. you're on the British baking show? <laughs> Can you bring up your bone <laughs> surprise? Ah. <laughs> uh, so he basically quits. He quits. Cold Iron quits. His second in command, who is this uh, rather milquetoast looking guy named Dr. Howdley, which I was very excited. Uh, He's partners with Willard the robot, Howdley. Who is partners with Willard the robot. He puts them in charge. Simple. As he's walking out too, this motherfucking guy comes up, who I don't know who he is. He never appears again. No. He's got <laughs> tragically cut bangs in his head. He's got a mullet. And he's like... I'm here to take you for your recertification as a sharpshooter. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what's this now? What's this now? And it he gets in like, his face like... It sounds like that's Jim, Jimmy Stewart that showed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I run the gamut of my limited range of voices. Uh, he kind of looked like um, the character that Jim Carrey plays in Dumb and Dumber, but with a mullet instead. Right. But like, he had that hair and he had a dumb face. And he's like, what do you say to me? And he's like, I'll just keep sending you the medals like I always do. It's like, what? what? Yeah. But we establish, very importantly... That not only is Dr. Cold Iron a robotics genius who won't take shit from anybody who gives him no guff. No, nope, Cold Iron. Guy also gets sharpshooting badges. Yes. Every day, every week. Not badges, medals. So apparently gets recertified every week. <laughs> Cold yeah. Iron calls his girlfriend Penny. He's like, leave work. We're going to lunch. Then they have a long lunch with romantic music. <laughs> yeah, it's a montage. It's montage. Weird. She, she kind of just disappears in the movie too. I didn't understand why that was set up. But did you notice they go home after eating lunch and they have two steaks? And then well, Penny says, will Tim, you go to the store Tim, and get more food Tim, while I cook? Tim, talk about the steaks. <laughs> What's These that? steaks. Like, <laughs> They're humongous. It's like each steak is enough. Like <laughs> me and my human girlfriend, were we to eat these steaks, <laughs> we would eat one and have leftovers. Like it covers this woman's, like she was carrying them flat on her hands. It covers her hands and drapes over either side. Like, like it's like a raw pizza. It's insane. <laughs> 
Uh, before stuff. we get too far into this, though, because yeah, yeah. I know where this is heading, I just want to point out that we do see <laughs> Dr. Howdley, who's now in charge of the rotor thing. Oh, yes. And he and Willard are having amusing antics about, like, it turns out they're both idiots. Willard's the robot, by the way. They're yes. both idiots who don't know what they're doing because no. it's all been Dr. Gold's iron. Yes. And at one point, like, they're, like, they're like talking about what they're going to do to get the results. And they suggest something pretty stupid. And in the, probably the wittiest moment of the entire movie – Mm-hmm. Dr. Howdley goes to Willard and goes, what do you think this is? Some low-budget sci-fi film? Right. Practically steps and stares, <laughs> and at, stares the at the camera and winks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, yeah, so they, after eating all day, they go home. It's still light out. So it's not, it was lunch <laughs> to light out. So even if it's summer, it's still tops maybe five hours yes. to eat the biggest steaks in the world. And he does go to like the store to get something else. Something. Uh, I should mention that the store does not look futuristic. It looks like just a, yes. a 7-Eleven in the middle of nowhere. Those steaks were and, so big, George. Oh, is this a list? No. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Secret Service gave them code names. Oh, it sounds like a list to me. What were the code no. names, Tim? Diamond Humper. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Terrible code names. Diamond or Humper. What's the other one, Tim? Pac-Man Puncher. That's Pac-Man. the names. Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what, Tim? I'm going to jump on your thing. and uh, Another list? I'm going to derail. Yeah, I'm fucking right. I, this is a list of top ways to derail all far momentum in a Sadie Vimco <laughs> podcast. You ready? We do that on <laughs> enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, number one. Record podcast at a steep inclination and let gravity do the rest. <laughs> what? <laughs> you almost made yeah. me do a spit take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like, you know, you can't roll forward because you're on a hill. It's like, like oh. Got it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> um, repeatedly <clears throat> clear throat and <laughs> kind of trail off into just a What? It's number two. <laughs> Repeatedly clear thro- throat and tra- trail off into indistinct bumbling. That's number two. Uh, <clears throat> that never happens. Number uh, three. Wait until <laughs> someone starts saying something and start a list. I mean, we know that one. We're doing that right now. But number four. This is the good one. Are you ready? Make a list of all the things that come up in the show on a random occasion. Make a list within a list. So like Sasquatch, JFK, the JFK assassination, the Bruder film. film, the various antics of various members of the Kennedy family, um, pet rocks. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, bizarre childhood memories related to the first time you ate certain foods. That's Sub great. list in that one. I first time you made a hot dog. First time you tried salt. First time you ate a poached egg. First time you tasted human flesh. On and on and on. <laughs> Uh, unexplained references to past episodes. Like in that one episode of um, Dr. So-and-so's Garden, where there was that thing yeah, that happened. Dr. Cook. That's a good way to stop all momentum. Yeah. <laughs> and so forth. You want to add some more? I was going to tell you. We're almost moving forward, Tim. We got to do something. JFK's <laughs> code name was. You want to know it? Oh, yeah. What's JFK's code name? What is it? Is it Explodo Head? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it should be Explodo Head. It's actually Lancer. Um, all right all right so uh good now list. That I've, uh, good I've lists. Sta- i didn't just stall the show we put it in reverse <laughs> no you didn't we're talking <laughs> about the robot oh yeah oh no we're not talking about the robot mm-hmm. what dr cold iron goes to the supermarket he does which is just a 7-eleven mm-hmm. and uh we hear some country music yes <laughs> nods to you um let's see what and is the of course bit? it's being robbed it's being robbed, and not just being robbed, a woman is taken hostage. A very 80s looking woman. She yeah. has blonde, curly poodle hair. She's got the and a big, guy comes out big with a pads. gun to her head. Big shoulder pads. You're right. Actually, with like like stripes on them, which I guess was trying to be like future. Yeah. And um He he shoots the guy holding her. He does, but we need to get the casual racism that's brought in here. Oh, 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 I forgot. So the guy, I didn't register this, and I'm only able to piece this together by things the character said. The guy who's holding the hostage, mm-hmm. he's got dark glasses, a mustache, and dark hair. Yes. And he comes out, and he says, what are you going to do, Blondie? To our hero, Cold Iron. And Cold Iron's like, easy, greasy. And I'm oh, like, whoa, buddy. I did hear that. And then I he calls the Cold Iron a white boy. So I'm like, oh, that guy's not white. Because, guys, <laughs> ah, the guy yeah. that he was saying was definitely white. He was. Um, yep. And he, uh, 
Cold Iron, because he is the ultimate badass, he pulls out like a fucking Desert Eagle like handgun. It's like big as my head. Yes. And and the guy's like, oh shit. <laughs> and does he shot. shoot him in the he shoots him in the head, right? Yeah, one of those because one of those Clint Eastwood, you know, he's holding a hostage, but he shoots him in the head. Yeah, and there's like a little piece of red on his thing. Yep. And then he's a pruder him. He's a pruder's the fuck out. Well, except for again, just like it's All like right. a little dot in his head. Then the lady who is the hostage mm-hmm. turns out she's like a ninja. Yeah, because another guy tries to attack her and, and she takes care of him with karate or jujitsu. Like whatever. does a she does like some roundhouse kicks on him. Mm-hmm. She hold does a thing where she holds her foot up against his neck and he's pinned against the thing and he passes out or dies. Uh she never comes back. No, no. He said, yeah. She, he says, you want a job? And that's the last we see of her. Yeah. You would think, like, if there's just the inexplicable martial arts master kicking the... Like, how did the guy ever get the hand on in the first place? I mean... I think that was an 80s anyway. joke. Like, ha ha, a lady who can fight. I think that's... Oh. I think that's kind of what... It's supposed to be a little bit of comic You relief. might be right. Yeah. Yeah. This movie sucks. Because this movie's... Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and while this... Also, I don't know if it's before or after we get our other casual racism, there's a Native American worker... <laughs> oh, God, he won't stop this. hitting on this 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 lady's trying to do her work. I guess I don't know why she's sitting next to him. They both seem to be technicians at the at the at the lab. Yeah, because they're both wearing white coats. Yeah. Um, we don't like so they're working under Doctor Howdley and the robot. I guess, and I don't think either one of us should do an impersonation of this guy's voice because it's well, he's not. I even, think it's probably. I don't think he's being racist. I think he's doing like a stupid voice. He's just like. Oh, I don't know, man. It's just, it's tricky. Like that voice is something else. And he, but he's like, um, all I care about is the ladies. He says yes. the most bewildering line in the entire movie. Uh, she goes, you're not really an Indian. Cause that's what they say. Instead of Native American. He goes, check out these cheekbones. What do you think I am? A sissy? Yeah. That's I, like, hmm. What does that even mean? So having cheekbones means you're a sissy. <laughs> yeah. That? that was, uh, he sucked. This he guy did. sucked. And she wrote <gasps> shoe booty on her piece of paper was that her name for him what I don't, now, so sure. apparently that's his name because i looked up the thing oh. I'm like what's this going his name is shibuti why is she writing his name to, why would she hate this guy is, tim why is anything happening <laughs> was she casting a spell on him maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> do we have to repeat uh, his racist uh tagline what's he say again uh okay i'm just quoting the movie he says yep. once you go red you never get out of bed yep Which okay is, yes yeah anyway i remember that I didn't write that one. I wrote that other so I'm trying to read it. Oh, the only other foreshadowing he puts on the movie is he's like, yeah, you know, he doesn't say Native Americans. You know, Native Americans get to pick how they're killed. And, and some of them have a rope tied each part of their body and then to a horse and it rips them apart. Oh, yeah, he, ta- he, he talks about the blood eagle as a way of yeah. showing like doubt. He's like, I'll show you, Indian. They do this thing called a blood eagle where yeah. they put a horse to each of your bits. They pull it out and you spread it. Like, Tim, do you know what a blood eagle really is? Um, it's, it's nothing to do with Native Americans. It's something it's that the, the Viking Vikings thing? did. Yes, I know the Viking yeah. thing. Yeah. So, like this movie, I'm like, come on. I understand Google wasn't a thing in 1980, whatever. Yeah. But like, mm-hmm. oh yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Why are we talking it's about this? All, guy? It's Shibuti all sucks. Dug. Whatever this. Let's move on. Move crap. on to. Uh, yeah. There's another funny garbage. bit with Willard here, because Holdinger. He needs Willard's Who's help. Holdinger. What, what's the name? Howdily. 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 Calls for Willard, the robot, and uh-huh. Willard, the robot, is eating, reading an issue of Eerie. Did you see that? It was a quick take. <laughs> Did you miss I, it? I saw he was reading something, and I wanted to hit rewind, and I was like, eh. "It was Eerie magazine." That's pretty cool. It's good to know that Eerie magazine makes it to the future. So we never see Cold Iron's girlfriend. She's left at home again, cook, cooking steak. She's at home. She's at home waiting for him. Whatever he's going to bring from the supermarket, she's like, because "These steaks are getting all rancid." I think she dies of botulism off camera somewhere, but she tries to eat the yes. raw, rotted meat. Because our our Native American worker put something on something. I couldn't see, and he short circuits something, and yeah. this causes Rotor to wake up. And at the same time, we should mention Doctor Howdley and. Willard have been doing something where they're like putting, they're loading yeah. the personality, the operating system into the Rotar chassis. For some reason, I don't know. Well, because they have a sixty day deadline, but oh, that's right. Whatever, whatever this the horrendous racial stereotype of the Native American guy does causes all the batteries to drain, mm-hmm. and Rotor leaves, and he only has the most basic part, which they call the Prime Directive. Yeah, of his person, <laughs> which that's what Star Trek is, right? Yeah, the, the, prime. the prime directive of Star Trek is don't interfere with another planet's culture, right? Right. 
the prime directive of Rotar is to apprehend and execute. Yes. <laughs> like, so all they think they got inside this invincible cop machine is find people committing crimes and kill them for it. Yep. He gets up. And therein and lies the movie. That's the, yeah. There, therein right. lies the movie. He knocks over chairs. This is the only good shot in the movie. He gets on a motorcycle and it's an okay shot of him going through the parking garage. I don't as, know why he had flesh all of a sudden either. Yeah. We saw him just that morning where he was just a an animatronic skeleton, but now he looks like kind of a doughy middle aged cop. Yep, with a wearing leather. Wearing leather. He likes his motorcycle cop. He's got the pot belly, wanna point it out. Not a huge one. I'm not body shaming here, but he doesn't look like he's not quite Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. And uh he he mustache. does have the obligatory cop mustache, but like they didn't give him enough time to grow it in, so it's kind of stubbly. I'm like, <laughs> come on, guys. <laughs> so he has a stubbly mustache. Then we cut and he to, goes out to serve, protect, and yeah. execute. Give tickets. We cut to the uh, horrible couple. Man, this couple sucks. <laughs> they are arguing about. Oh yeah, he's yeah. It's nineteen. It's the future, and he's like, it's embarrassing for you to have a job. When we get married, you're going to stay at home. That's She's cool. a recent college grad or about to be, mm-hmm. and he's like, you're going to get a job. She's like, yeah, I went to school. He's like, it's just embarrassing, you know, if you go out and work. I'm like, Tim, I want to say, I don't think this is just 19. Like, both my parents worked in the 80s. Yeah. I don't think this is just an I think this is a very specifically <laughs> these filmmakers' viewpoints in the 80s. Yeah, I guess so. Which? This is the future. Did you get weird commercials for this? Um, I, I think I, I started typing. I zoned out. I got the both. I got so many commercials for this movie. Mm-hmm. It was on YouTube, everybody. And they were so right wing. Oh, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even notice. Like, I, I was multiple writing. times this guy came up like, when as a culture do we decide to stand up and say no to woke? I'm like, oh, oh my buddy. God, I didn't get those. Oh, I got that multiple must times. Must be what you're searching out. No, it must be your stupid Republican movie you chose. <laughs> 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 Making invincible cops. <clears throat> but he doesn't want a wedding either. Does he say something about the wedding being paid? You know what it is? It's the wedding. I mean, that's what's wrong with this. Look, I want a wedding. And just because you've already gone through with it doesn't mean that I've... It's a barbaric it. ritual. It's a sacrificial virgin. It's heathen. It's sweet. It's dragging us out, Sony. But well, this guy's just a pig who wants to... His Look, girlfriend, they're engaged to just come home and work. And they have this whole conversation. And I, to the movie's credit, I think this is to establish he's just a pile of shit. Yeah, yeah. Like they, I don't think they were endorsing this guy's views, really, I, despite what I just said. Because he's like, you're not going to work. Let's go to IHOP. And then they get pulled over by a cop. Because he's speeding to IHOP. He spe- he's like, I got to get there for the Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity. Oh, you're wrong. He pulls over because she wants to get out. And he goes, you want to get out? Okay. Remember? You're just going to kick her out no. on the road. Oh, yeah. really? So, oh, okay, I knew. Yeah. And then the police officer shows up and he's like, nothing wrong here. Here's 20 bucks. Leave us alone. Yeah, he tries to bribe him with 20 bucks, which in the future, Tim, oh. I did the math. <laughs> you did the math for the future of 1984. 20 bucks. You went back 20. in time and, <laughs> yeah, and then went used, forward. Uh, I found a website called Speculative Future Currency Tracker. <laughs> oh. And uh, it turns out $20 back in 1980, whatever, would have been a pretty sizable bribe. Uh-huh. That would have been like, you know, a lot. But because this was actually set in the future, 20 bucks uh-huh. is equivalent to three buttons and a piece of wadded up gum. <laughs> yeah. They still chew gum in the future. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, well, gum is a little bit about Gum is worth $5. So, because it is rare. Because the gum trees died. Right. In the great gum tree war of 18, well, no, 2018. <laughs> 1993. So, yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. So yeah. she. He gets killed. She honks her horn for some reason. The cop shoots him. Yeah, just shoots him. And then he's going to come for her. But she honks her horn. I don't know why. Oh. And this is Rotor's only weakness. What a stupid weakness. Yeah, they never explain that. But that's that's Rotor's big weakness. You honk the horn. And despite the fact he's a robot, he immediately clutches the side of his helmet and goes, oh. Yes. (laughs) And it really does seem to immobilize him pretty good. Like, if you just leaned on the horn, he'd be defenseless. I read about it in the future. Uh Uh-huh. In the future, when oh. the and the way he was built, when he hears horns, he actually hears Dave Matthews Band. Oh yeah. wow! <laughs> Wait, why doesn't he immediately just shoot himself in the head? Then? Do you think he Prime hears director, Dave Matthews Band and immediately thinks he's on a boat going underneath a bridge, and Dave Matthews Band empties all their shit from their doorbells yes. on him? That's what, I, that's what I think when I think Dave Matthews it's Band. A, Look it up, folks. Audible story. 
translates into his robotic <laughs> mind. <laughs> so she's on the run from Rotor. Rotor can see the past. Like if she gets out of the car, he sees it. And there he... is literally a scene late. Well, uh, another funny thing this movie does, like the time frame is kind of weird. I guess it's all set over a night. And um, this woman gets the jump on Rotor because of the honking horn and mm-hmm. gets out of sight with him. But he's able to track her with his various senses. You think they'd use... She heat? goes to like a... Uh, no. They didn't do that though. Yeah, they just really... Like... like It's like Spider-Sense <laughs> from the Spider-Man. It is box. like Spider-Sense. I was he thinking of that. It's very much like the Spider-Sense from the 70s movies. He's able to rewind future. A lot of people try to help this woman. Like it's a very... I feel like it, like the filmmaker was trying to say like in Texas, we help people yeah. fight cops. <laughs> um... Like she pulls into like a like restaurant. A, a a restaurant cheesy roadside diner thing, and she's hiding out there waiting. And uh, did you catch the cook? His teeth. Why? <laughs> like, the cook had rabbit teeth, as if he had just been dressed up as no, a like, rabbit, like beaver teeth, and like yeah, not comical. realistic. Like they were comically huge. <laughs> And the cop comes in through the back of this restaurant, grabs the cook and puts his face on the grill. And you see this close up of this guy with like two tongue depressors hanging up the front of his face. And we're supposed to be teeth. He's going, oh, he had to wear a disguise. Every single person in this thing s- jumps to save her. Yes. Like, like, so the cops punch in people like this one guy, this very large guy grabs oh, him and yeah, Hicks holds him. And like, well, first he pulls his shirt open, which I'm like, what? Yes. what? I know Why? he pulls his shirt off to fight. <laughs> Rotor. <laughs> like in a really funny move too. He kind of like sticks it like it's like he's wearing like a, a sleeveless tee, right? Yes. And he kind of sticks his fingers up and the arm just kind of pulls it forward and just snaps forward like a bib. <laughs> and he's a very big guy and he's like he grabs Rotor and Rotor like what punches him in the head? Uh yes. I think he just clocks his ears like 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 Dr. like Mr. Gower. <laughs> oh Mr. Gower, right. stop boxing my ears. <laughs> And she runs outside. Should... Another guy hides her. That's when Rotor well, rewinds time. We should say this woman's hiding. name is Sonia. By the way, let's call I didn't it. catch that at all. All right, so yeah, Sonia, really? he said her name so much. And so I'd yeah, she, she gets in a, a trucker helps her, uh-huh. and again she honks the horn. And, but why does she stop honking the horn? He falls over in pain. I know. And then she's like, "I'm going to stop honking this, and run." She could have like ended this just by honking the horn repeatedly when she first yes. saw her her hated fiance get shot. And uh, she called Cold Iron. Some it's confusing here. There no Cold Iron actually shows up. Remember? Oh, that's right. He shows up because Cold Iron is tracking Rotor somehow, and, and he shows up and he has his big gun. He shoots. Well, actually, one of the truckers has been shooting the cop, and it turns <laughs> out that knocks him down, but he mm-hmm. gets up again. He's shooting. Cold Iron shoots with his big gun. He gets kind of in a. There's a kind of funny martial arts thing because Cold Iron is such a badass. The cop swings at him. He does this really. It's very Kirk, like Captain Kirk level yeah, fighting. Yeah. Like two middle-aged, out-of-shape guys, kind of <laughs> vaguely stuntmen. <laughs> yeah, no, no stuntmen, no stuntmen in this movie, Tim. <laughs> Just, and she escapes, but he's able to call her in the car because yeah, they the didn't future. anticipate. Well, they didn't anticipate cell phones, but they definitely <laughs> no. anticipated cell. Well, I guess car phones probably existed by then, right? There were, yeah, some people had. Them. I think it's the expensive. first car phone was invented in in real life. I think it was invented in 1902. Ooh. Yours, yeah, because Ford invents the car like in 1901, and then 1902 is the car phone later. And that's really impressive because Alexander Graham Bell only invented the telephone in 1899. So they really... So what were they doing with that phone? <laughs> they're, just, <laughs> they're calling. They're like, hey. Is it just so they didn't to... have to talk to their um, wives? Sorry, hon. Probably. I'm on the phone. That was definitely the period of time when you hated your wife. I'm on the phone with... My wife! <laughs> so, all right, the long Code and short Nancy of it... Tripper. <laughs> I, Wait, the long so, and the short? I, if you want to... What? Well, no, the, the long and short yeah. of what I'm going to say, if you want to jump in with some of the details, the rest of the movie is essentially Sonia, the woman whose fiance got shot, is on the run all night from Rotor. Because Cold Iron, you know what I'm telling me. <laughs> wait, because Cold Iron has decided that as long as he doesn't kill her, he won't kill anybody else. So, you, yeah, he's like, will you be my bait? Help me to will help you, be my you bait? to help me. Also, Tim, like we've that. already seen we've already seen Rotor stick a guy's head on the grill. <laughs> so this isn't true. Like he can be, So he tells her he's like, you know where the fishing cabins are? She's like, no, because I'm not like a weird <laughs> fisherman. He's like, well, you follow a big sign. She goes, oh, I see it. So he's gonna meet her there. So she now this is where the timing is really odd. They give you the right? time too, and like it doesn't matter. Well, she's fl- driving all night, right? And he's off. But doing then other we things. have his storyline is he goes to the airport. <laughs> he calls up Dr. Steele, who That's is right. the other person who helped make Rotor, who he's never met before. Yeah, weird. 
which is weird, right? Well, I guess it's in the future. And he's like, I'm going to hang out at the American Airlines counter. I guess they paid some sort of thing. <laughs> he's like, you come fly in from wherever the hell you live and meet me. We're going to stop Rotor. She's like, okay. Do you want to talk about Dr. Steele when we see her? <laughs> well, she's a bodybuilder. And... Yeah, inexplicably, this woman is... She know it. I, she reminded me very much of Rogue from the X Men. Well, she has like like has, when Rogue appeared in the eighties before she got her glam redo for like Jim Lee in the cartoon. Like she's just this kind of. Oh, Tim just cried because I mentioned comics. Sorry, right. she's this very muscular woman with like skunk hair. Like she's got like this big like skunk, perm with a like a big stripe right there, down the middle. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. smell. No, if you we don't know that. Tim. If you got, I don't. They they might have had that app then that the, the smell of the person was it the smell of person smell the, the person you're talking to you know, he's like, i think she smells oh, good like skunk she smelled good <laughs> who else smelled good in this movie do you think cold iron smelled good <laughs> when cold iron saw her he was like oh my cherie he was like the, I bet, the cat from I bet the cold looney tune like horse coffee the looney tune cartoon <laughs> oh no <laughs> and he would skip along to loot, to loot after so while this poor woman sonia is riding all night with a killer cop on her tail yes. a killer robot cop they they they, they this woman Dr. Steele, the bodybuilder, flies in from wherever, mm-hmm. meets him at the airport. They check in at a hotel. Right. Why include that scene? I know. They just go there, There's drop a- their luggage, and like, okay, we better help that woman being chased. <laughs> I am a Bizarre. Woman. Bizarre. The woman's being chased. <laughs> and then they drive out to Wait a minute, George. Fishing cabin. Did I forget something? No. Um, that's a good oh. that's a good break. They head out finally. Oh, a list? A list? Now my list. list. The official list. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Wait, how fucking dare you? <laughs> so Willard, Just I'm going to make him a third list right now. Willard the robot. You'd think yep. he'd be a very smart addition to their team. But as we saw from this movie, Willard's like comic relief. He's stupid. He used, he to, be, uh-huh. he used to be a higher ranking science officer, but he made three big mistakes. And they have, they, that's why he's been lowered to like security helper. Security guard. Although he's second in command after Dr. Howdley. Oof. Well, his first mistake, Willard. Willard right. thought people would be less likely to throw away their parking tickets if he made them yummy edible tickets. But he made a big mistake in that he made them donut flavored. So the police ate them all before they handed them out. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, second, coppers! <laughs> the second one. We love our <laughs> police listeners. We have no police listeners. He, the second reason, he invented safe bullets. They were called sleeping bullets, which were supposed to put criminals to sleep rather than kill them. But mm-hmm. Willard mixed up the calculations, and he made bullets that did just the opposite. So they woke people up. Thus, these bullets caused people to resist arrest. They wouldn't take arrest. They resisted arrest. Oh. They wouldn't sleep. God <laughs> damn it. That sucks. Gotcha. No, you didn't get me. That just sucks. <laughs> All right. What's the third one, Tim? Willard made a tough-as-nails police toilet named after cold iron. Oh. It was the cold iron police toilet. But it, right. it failed because it was too much like cold iron. It wouldn't take <laughs> shit from anyone. <laughs> also, I kept giving coffee to horses. Yes. If you tried to shit in that <laughs> toilet, it would get up and quit its job. Say, I'm not taking that shit from you. Let Holdinger do it. What's his name? Col- Wait, H- Howdily. 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 He's important. Willard and Howdily. <laughs> Howdily is important to my story. That's why I keep mentioning him. I keep <laughs> correcting him. And right. I keep mentioning it because... It's important to my story. Oh, so how do leave folks scoop? How do is going to be vitally important to our revenge stories. And that's it. The movie is over. No, it's not. Well, <laughs> I actually do have a question, Tim. Mm-hmm. So there was something we learned when the two of them get together to defeat the chassis that's made of metal that learns. Yes. Um, <clears throat> oh, they have maybe Dr. Steel brings a key. Yes. He doesn't say what it is because he showed it to the robot at the truck stop encounter, didn't he? Oh, he had it already. I didn't catch that. He showed it something to Rotor when he fought him, and Rotor stepped back like he was Dracula afraid of a crucifix. You don't remember that? Oh, no, I didn't catch I uh, no. And he didn't explain so, what it was. I was like, what's going on? We At this point, we learned that there is a key, that there is a, there's a keyhole in Rotor's back. <laughs> if you stick this key in, he shuts down, which is like, oh, that's handy. Yes. <laughs> so cutting to the end... Dr. Steele. Well, they both ride in the car. Cold Iron they, they are riding in the car together. They have a good conversation. Did they you write a a, conversation. any of their lines down? No, did you? Yes, I, I did. I did. Cold, Cold Iron says, oh, he's a brain I, without I, a heart, a conscience without recognition, a will without a soul. And Steele says, if I miss, 
You'll be fighting your own base instincts to combat pure will. You'll have to use pure illogic. And <laughs> cold, cold Iron's they, like, what do you mean? She says, you will have to allow yourself to fail. Use your failure against him. Your failure is his failure. Your weakness is his weakness. And nothing. No, this never comes into play. I thought it was no, big foreshadowing. No. Ne- also, spoilers, neither does the key. <laughs> It's fucking so. There is a line I do. It there is a line I have that's right after they get out of the car. They get to the fishing thing, <laughs> and they hop at the side, and they're walking through the like this like the scrub at the side of a highway. Right. And Doctor Steele's like, "You seem to be following a trail. Do you know any good Indian tricks?" Oh no! And, and <laughs> do you remember this? I do. <laughs> and and Cold Iron goes, "Well, I used to spend every summer on the reservation." <sighs> what yeah. why why is that mentioned i don't know that doesn't pay off no it doesn't except to show that he's a outdoorsy guy I again guess. i guess a super badass yeah he's like yeah grew up I would... meanwhile let's pick up the story of sonia the woman who's on the run for the road yeah, she's she running there. constantly she's there it's daylight now she's been driving all night long <laughs> while this guy was checking in dr steel at a hotel and she's like come on doctor it's cold iron don't let me down and she's looking around what to do with this fishing cabin she sees a boat she's like i guess it goes swim out into the middle of the reach to the boat the river doesn't undo the rope so well, she gets about 20 feet out i i thought too much about this i'm like why would you get in a boat you're just a sitting duck he's got a gun he just shoot you well that's uh, also stupid yes if he was far enough away you get to the other side of the lake maybe you can't follow anymore that actually makes sense but he's like three feet behind her and she also didn't undo the rope no. so you just see her getting pulled back. He just the cops pulling rotor is pulling rotor. the boat back. Yep. Rotor. <sighs> then they and then steel fights rotor. <laughs> <laughs> well, they shoot rotor first, and which does nothing. But steel, she has the key. She mm-hmm. knows she gets in his back. But we did mention steel's a bodybuilder, right? Yes, yes. I guess she thinks she can punch a robot because she just runs up and she's like bear hugging the robot, and the bear robot bear hugs her. Yes. And she rips his back open her. or something. Did she die? Oh, she, no, she dies. Yeah. Oh, see, that's how little I or care. Or maybe because there is a, there is a scene at the end that's kind of weird. We'll talk about that. Yeah. She yeah she kind of rips up his chest. He's full of like green noodles, and she goes, "I thought they smelled bad <laughs> on the outside." Damn Still it! Junk. Baby <laughs> twist. <laughs> Damn it! That also comes of nothing. The green noodles. What's that? We well, you know he has no tubes. Why does he have noodles in him? Um, <laughs> she doesn't stick the thing in his back. He doesn't get turned off. You know what comes back, everybody? Yep. Flips through his notes to find the fucking word. Well, I know. What's it called? Lasso. Yeah, what was the lasso called? I don't know. Hang- I wrote that down. A hangman's lasso. It's like primer cord or something. It was explosive kept- shit. The shit he used to not blow up the stumps. Right. He keeps lassoing uh, the guy and, I guess, and he Blood Eagle uh, foreshadowing. He attaches it to his car and and Sonia gets to drive it. But but they attach it from different angles. Did you notice that? And like there's one. Yeah, because they're doing car. the blood eagle thing. There's one car. I guess he's tied to <laughs> trees and stuff. He's and got Sonya is honking points. on the horn. So she she honks the horn. Rotor goes oh, and then the guy <laughs> Cold Iron yeah. wraps a lasso around him. We never see what they're attached to. So like Rotor is held in kind of stasis by various lassos. Although at least one of them comes off while they're filming it, which is hilarious. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, he blows up the robot. No key. No. No noodles. No. Uh, None of the stuff that we foreshadowed. No. Blows him up. No foreshadowing of of, of uh, using your own failure against him. Yep. None of that. All oh, the stuff that they set oh, up. Oh, I get oh. it. Wait. Was there a failure? I mean, and was the beginning the movie, of the movie the when he lassoed the tree and it didn't come, it didn't blow up, you told me? That was his failure. Get it? Oh, he used his failure. Oh, wow. <laughs> there you go. That would, if the movie was better, <laughs> I would agree with you, but no. <laughs> So what's our little so, twist ending, though? You want us to tell it? So, Tim, <clears throat> I have a question for you. The woman in the beginning that he carries that's injured, is that Dr. Steele, the dead woman? I was confused. It didn't match up to the ending, did it? I thought no. it might have been Dr. Steele's body. It could have been where was Sonya's Sonya? body. Yeah, where was Sonya? Maybe Sonya gets blown up when the air, when because the, the, the rope's attached to the car. The whole rope blows up. I'll tell you, I wasn't, wasn't going to rewind to look again, but I was no, thinking the same either. thing. I'm like, nope, <laughs> I don't care enough. No, no force could make me. Probably it's in like one of the synopses online, but even that, I was like, that's too much effort for this. So he gets out of jail because uh, he told the story. Yep. He tells the cops the story, which we get to the beginning where he's in the cold fire. The survivor of this cold thing is in iron. Yeah. cold mm. iron. 
why do I have this problem? <laughs> Tim, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Cold Iron gets off and telling the cops, like, yeah, so I saved all your lives from the RoboCop. I know. He just walks out. Walks out. I don't take shit then, from anybody. And then he goes to the bathroom to try to take a shit in a cold iron toilet. In the toilet. He, he can't. The toilet He's gets like, up. I should eat more than just <laughs> than steaks. <laughs> but Tim, what happens when he walks out? This is the key. I know. Uh, 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 bugler. Bugler. This, these names are. I can't remember these names. Suck. These bugler. names suck. Bugler shoots him. For betraying him, I guess. Shoots him. <laughs> Just has a rifle in the parking lot. Comes up behind him, shoots and kills our main character, everybody. That's the end. It's not the end because well, there's more. You saw it. There could be a Rotor 2. They're, they're unclear. There never will be, but they set up a Rotor 2. Because <laughs> it's Dr. Because Steel. we learn that Dr. Cold Fire, I mean Cold Iron, oh, <laughs> is dead. Yeah. But... Because he was, I mean, I guess he didn't trust his girlfriend enough to take care of this. He has no family, it says. Right. He uh, All his papers and his research go to his nephew. Yeah, what? what? Rhett Cold. I think it's Rhett. <laughs> like Rhett Butler. Rhett Cold, Rhett Cold, Cold, Cold Iron. Iron. Maybe he's Rhett Who's Cold a student Fire. at like some Texas university. <laughs> he gets it and he's inspired by this. And he's going to make Rotor 2. And inexplicably, Rose Boy <laughs> 2 is Dr. Steel. Oh, yeah, no. There's a story <laughs> and there. And I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> it's just the woman who played Dr. Steel. Yes. As we see her on a computer screen, it's this robot. It's her. I'm like, that's that's the same lady, right? That's de- Because yeah. it's easy to tell because there's not too many like giant bodybuilding ladies with skunk hair. Well, I hope in the sequel you explain this. Let's go to Revenge. Go to Revenge. All right. Wherever you are. Wherever you're hiding, I'll find you. Revenge. One of us will die. One of us will will die. I will not let Cindy take my place. I will have my revenge. All right, so. uh, What was our little question? Our wild tree. Our our wild tree. Our wild tree. Our wild card question, number 35, Tim pulled out of the hat. Which of the characters from this movie would most likely name their child Bobby Joe Crabtree? Well, this, this is easy answer. Every All right, let's every hear every fucking one of them, except for Willard the robot. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> know who's get, know who I'm actually going to say is doing a character that I wanted to mention we didn't. Okay. After Doctor Cold Iron's shootout at the gas station, yes, he gets a call from an inspector oh, or a detective, right. mm-hmm. and the detective's name is Detective Mango. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So it's the fruit. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Crab tree, oh, mango. Right, right, right. It's the fruit surnames. He because don't... this world we're in here, which I don't know if you realize this, because the names, you're either named after a metal. Or a fruit. Cold iron or, or steel <laughs> or a fruit. Okay. Well, or a weather condition, because apparently you said his girlfriend's name is Gale. Yes. Penny Gale. So it's earth, wind, and fire shit. Ah, man. awesome. What? <laughs> You did yep. it. You, you, uh, I made sense of something in this you, movie. You, you, uh, you made the landing. What do you call it? You stuck the landing. I stuck the landing. Woo. All right. Woo. All right. So who wants to go first with their revenge story? Maybe I'll get it out of the way. Okay. Makes me nervous. Does it really? Got to stick, got to stick to my character. Got to stick the, oh, the character. You, you, oh, what's your character? You got to, you got to commit to the character. You gotta I don't know. Will it be? Bit. Will it be? I mean, you have two Abe, characters. Abe, you have uh, Abe Lincoln. Oh, Abe Lincoln is joining the pack. <laughs> no, Remember, there's a moratorium. We're not allowed to do Mark Twain anymore because I discovered no. that guy was a lie. Okay, it's no Mark Twain. <laughs> start, Play that music. Start the music. All right. All right. So my my revenge sequel is about Willard and Odinger. Odinger. Who's Odinger? <laughs> What's his name? Howdily. Howdily. Oh my God! How do we? Tim, get thought, one letter correct. I thought they were saying hold, holding. <laughs> how do we? How do we? How do we? Uh, <clears throat> Willard the robot and how do we? They have a spin-off revenge TV show. That's what they have. Okay. They obviously no longer work for the Texas Police Research Lab, so they have to do odd jobs to make money. And Willard, and? being comic relief, he does some uh-huh. stand-up comedy as a, as a stand-up comic robot. 
You know, ironically, we should mention as a robot, he was like a very limited mobility. He was just kind of like a standing. He can't sit down. It has he to be stand up comedy. He's the stand up comic. Jokes on set, he been He's the stand up comic. We're not dads, but we tell <laughs> dad jokes. He's the stand up comic that can't sit down. That's how they introduce oh, that's him. That's a good tag, they actually. They introduce him that way. All right, yeah, okay, way to go. <laughs> he also shits like a rain horse. Rain horse. No. Uh, oh, wait, I thought that was caught. <laughs> I thought that was horses that drink coffee. He tells jokes like, uh, why do liberals like printed pornography better than computer porn? And then they, then they say, why? Why? Why, says, do, why do liberals like printed porn better than Because they love porn. licking the envelopes they mail the photos in. It tastes like sexy horses. He loves licking the envelopes. Because the glue mm. tastes like sexy horses. And he'd say, why do Texas... Is that a reference to the fact that glue is made of horses? Maybe. Because then he says, why do Texas horses like coffee so much? And he's like, Why? Why? He says, because it helps them outrun the glue factory so they aren't made into glue so evil liberal socialist democrats can use the glue to steal envelopes full of child porn. And then the audience is Wow, laughing. it's escalated. Yeah, this is a Texas, I should, it's a Texas uh, comedy show. Comedy this, show. We should say, this is not it's, indicative of all people from Texas. This is the deeply problematic uh, part of Texas where AI has been in existence since the 80s and it is... It's deeply racist. Their boss, Bugler, Bugler, he doesn't want them in Texas snooping around. They're trying to find out who killed their friend, Colbeck. Oh, yeah. And it, you know what, everybody? Remind you? It's Bugler. It's Bugler. Middle of the fucking day in the parking lot where everybody saw him. <laughs> so he wants them out of Texas. So uh-huh. he spreads the rumor that Willard is a robot with no gender, which he is. And It's totally true. And yeah, Holdinger totally is living in sin with the robot. I don't know. what's. It's Howdily, by the way. Howdily. Howdily, Just Howdily is living wow. in sin. <laughs> So they have to get out of Texas. No choice. Their their life is in danger. They venture out and enter the liberal socialist pedophile nightmare that is parts of the U.S. known as not Texas. <laughs> they have many adventures and like they meet Hall and Oates and Tiffany. And, wow. And uh, they solve crimes. The crime of a toothy lunker. And uh, in se- season oh two. God. Yeah, so oh, let's, let's two seasons. The ratings drop. And what they Quickly. do, they introduce a cute child, the daughter of Penny. It's Cold Iron's son. He had a Cold secret... Iron's da- son is his daughter? Penny. Penny was his girlfriend. Remember, we never saw her again. Oh, her name is Penny Gale. I forgot that. She yeah. had a child. Holy shit, Tim. Just... Is Penny... Does that count as a metal name? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Copper okay. Penny. I think her full name was Copper Penny Gale. She... I'm surprised <laughs> the kid's name isn't uh, Nickel. She, she needed one more middle name with a fruit in it. <laughs> Come quiet. They introduce the little kid. He's Cold Iron Jr. or Little Chili Iron. He says things like, I don't take Sucks. poop from nobody. In fact, that's his catchphrase. Everybody laughs. Nice. So Willie does some <laughs> stand-up in not Texas towns. Tries his best. Mm-hmm. He says, mm-hmm. why do Texans, Texas horses drink coffee? And everybody's like, I don't know. And he says, I don't know. But that is one instance I am against interspecies bathrooms like you liberals promote. And then they boom off stage and he gets kicked out. <laughs> George is trying to I'm laughing. I forgot to do the robot you. voice. Uh, you did that time. That's why I laughed. It was like the first time we got the robot voice in there. Man, I ruined it. Someone sends them a, a film. A Who? Bugler. Is it Zapruder? Yeah, Bugler shooting Bugler. cold iron. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, we got to get back to Texas. We've solved this. Somebody's helping us out from the inside. So they head back to Texas to confront him at the end of season five. Season five? But, yeah, but Bugler... Bugler has activated Bugler? Rotar 2, the one based on Dr. Steel. Oh, shit. She no longer has the skunk streak in her hair. She's moved on to the grunge book of the 90s, even though she's oh. more into Hootie and the Blowfish. Hmm. And they stop at a comedy... And they stop at a comedy club just outside Texas because they need more money to get uh, get gas. They being Dr. Howdley and... Willard. The robot. Okay, Willard. And, right. and their son, Chili Iron. Oh chili yes, iron. chili. Yes. Mm. Wow, everybody's turning. People at home, I hope you're taking notes <laughs> on this sprawling morass of a story. You know what I thought when I wrote this? This is really short. Or you thought this is really quick? <laughs> you thought really this quick. was short, huh? But surprisingly, Doctor Steel Rotar is in the audience. Her programming has gone wrong, of course. She's become a heckler at the comedy show that Willard the Robot is doing. Ain't that just like a road? She heckles Willard at the show, and it turns out. This whole thing was a trap anyway. They wanted them to come to Texas so they could just kill them. They lured them back to shut them up for good. So Steel Rotor heckles Willard, shouts at his jokes, which make no sense anyway. And and Willard short circuits. And then Steel comes after. 
Hottinger. Comes after Howdily. Howdily. Uh-huh. Howdily. Yep. Steele comes after Howdily. Luckily for him, there's a clown comedian called Gravy Sipper, the clown. And Steel Rotor can't help but... Not to be confused with the uh, Secret Service name for Eleanor Roosevelt's Gravy Muncher. Gravy Muncher. Gravy Sipper. Much more (laughs) surprising. It seems... Although gravy is something you typically sip rather than munch. Yes. Gravy Muncher seems much more filthy. Well... Gravy Sipper seems much more palatable. (laughs) You had a choice. You're like, George, choose the room. It's not the Lady of the Tiger. It's the Gravy Sipper or the Gravy Muncher. I'm going to go Gravy Sipper. Gravy Sipper. Okay. Even though, yeah, you're like, all right, yeah. You derailed me. <laughs> so, <laughs> Howdinger. I don't think you've been on the rails this whole time. Howdinger okay. runs out. Gets the clown. Nope. The clown's Howdily. Car. Howdily runs out. Howdily. Steals yep. the clown's car. Uh-huh. It's got a big horn on it. He says, uh-huh. I'll be back when he goes out to get it. He drives it back in. Nice, nice. Horn, yes. horn blowing. Uh-huh. This rotor is still. It's their only weakness. Can't take a horn. They did not improve that between models, huh? <laughs> they didn't improve it. <laughs> So little chili iron climbs up on Rotor while he's in pain, and he has, he says, need some earplugs, and he jams two pencils into each ear. Short circuiting. I have a question. Yeah? Is it one pencil in each ear, or does he actually take two pencils and shove them in each ear, like you said? One, like one in pencils? each ear. One in each ear. Okay. I had to clarify that, because I'm painting a vivid mental image. <laughs> this story's so long. I know. This is insane. <laughs> the fact you went first, I hate you for it. Because people so, have to sit through this to hear mine. I'm just going to say... They catch up with Boogler. Bugler! <laughs> but then, luckily for Little Chili and Ho- uh-huh. Hodinger, <laughs> there's the annual coffee drinking horse parade. <laughs> and just to remind everybody, Odinger is Howdily. <laughs> Howdily. <laughs> Forget it. This is your producer, Miss Lee. Although the Secret Service calls me Sparkleberries. George could no longer take Tim's mispronunciation of hodling, and both hosts broke down in tears as they took a timeout. Tim's revenge story ends with hodling and little chili iron getting back to the police HQ in Dallas, only to find that everyone is now a rotor cyborg. The machines have risen up and taken over. The rotors send little chili iron to a re-education camp. We now return to our hosts after they semi-compose themselves. Uh. <laughs> That's the end. Yeah, Tim, they kill. That no, was the right. They kill them all except for little little chili iron. They send them to a a Texas robot school. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah, and they learn about the time that <laughs> robot Jesus rode on a robot dinosaur. Uh, I heard about that, Tim. And, uh-huh. and it's called Rotor. It's it's a, it's a Rotor. It's a robot palindrome. There you go. Let's just it is a palindrome. Let's drag that story in the door, all wet and dead. Yeah, you that de- was you derailed me. Okay, don't no no Tim. You didn't start off on the tracks. You were <laughs> you were you were you were somewhere. The station was way in the distance. You were somewhere away afield. I thought. Wow, that, that was a good story. I thought. Uh, yours? Yeah. You thought that, huh? It's good. Oh, uh, you made me cut out so much of it. <laughs> Wait, really? Read your story and we'll... You could do it as bonus information. Like, people could go to our Patreon and get, like, the full unexpurgated version of Rotor uh, the Palindrome. Well, we don't have one, so... Uh, well, Do people we'll want a, a Patreon? Write in. Write us. Write in. Seti Bimco with an E at the end. Mm-hmm. Gmail.com. Tell us how much you want a Patreon. Yes. All right, so here's mine. Ooh, start music ready? for George. Start the music. Okay. Everybody stay around. Listen, it's going to be good. All right, right, right. Now, now, clearly, clearly, Rotor, Rotor, it starts <laughs> off with a pretty clear setup for a sequel where we see Rhett, Cold Iron, and he's recreated his uncle's stuff to create a new, more superior Rotor, which is the one that looks like Dr. Steel. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a reanimated Dr. Steel corpse. We don't know. Because we're not going to be following that part. That's not... What? There was nothing about that movie to sense it was a revenge story. In fact, I'm going to be spotlighting some other characters. I think you called her Dr. Odenkirk or something? Called him? Dr. Dr. Howdily Dr. Howdily and Willard. They were left kind of holding the bag mm-hmm. here. We seems like, you know, Dr. Cold Iron gets shot by Bugler. Stuff seems like it ends in a really depressing note. Imagine you're these two. All those politicians... Who are so ready to shut this down 
this program down. Now they have to deal with multiple people being killed by an out of control robotic police officer. Right. And the two of them realize that they're next. Holding it won't her be and maybe will, from and... Rotor. It won't be from Rotor too. Mm-hmm. But forces have aligned against them that are going to take them down. Who, who's the them? Holdingly, holdingly and Willard? It's it's <clears throat> it's Howdily. Howdily and and Willard. Good, good, good. Now there's not much we've learned about Howdily that shows that he was a particularly strong person or a particularly admirable person. He seemed a bit of a guy who got where he was just by being in the right place at the right time, taking advantage of people around him. <clears throat> and seeing, you know, speaking of people being in the right place at the right time, have you ever heard that whole advice about if you're being chased by a bear, you and your friend? You don't need to be faster than your, the bear. You have to be you faster, to be than, faster your than your friend. So when the various forces start descending on whatever the fuck the name of this <laughs> thing was, the Dallas Robot Lab thing, mm-hmm. you know who can't run very fast is Willard. Oh, I'm sure. Dude's got no legs. They get to a curb, he just stopped. So how do he just kind of shoves Willard over and says, <laughs> take him, and he runs off. Oh. Yeah. Willard, the, the, the comedian who can't sit down. Oh, man, you better <laughs> believe those Texas cops, do. they just brutalize Willard. <laughs> They hit him with lug wrenches. Oh, no. They hit him with ball-peen hammers. They hit him with hacksaws. Various tools. They just they, they torture him until he dies. Does, he dies. And the, he does dies. he go, ow, ow, please stop? He goes, please, might I just see another issue of Eerie Magazine before I go? <laughs> oh, it's awful. He's, why was I programmed to feel pain? Right. So Dr. Howdley hits the road. Literally. He's on the run from all these forces, people who know he knows too much. They already killed Willard. They already killed Dr. Cold Iron because he knew too much. <clears throat> Something we should have mentioned about Dr. Howdley, he had a bit of a jaundice problem. Mm. When he's in a stable environment, he was able to take medicine to control this and stuff, but he had rapidly failing, was that the kidney? Ooh. He's on the road. He's living on bad future food that you could get at like weird sideways, you know, weird su- so, like uh, supermarkets on the side of the road and stuff. Like they still had Subway. Like, yeah, probably. And he's just eating this stuff and like his health's going to shit. His, his liver just kicks out. He's turning very yellow. He's feeling, he's suffering from like, like various different forms of like, you know, circulation issues like his fingers start falling off oh. he loses the pinky in each hand what? and he's still driving he needs to get to safety the only place he can find that's free of the oppressive grip of this future this future yes. government that controls uh-huh. everything at this uh-huh. point the machines have taken over or just well no okay. just the people the people that owed the money to bugler and stuff uh-huh. like just that it's a corrupt government there was that whole line about like the cities are morass of sewers and shit. They don't say morass. That's too big a word for this movie, but a swamp of <laughs> sewers, I think they say. And ahead of him, shining in the distance, he sees salvation. What is Do you know it? what that salvation is, Tim? Oh, it's, let me see. Uh, is it a horse? No, it's cross. A cross. It's church. Church. He goes inside the church. This guy who's been on the run, he's just a mess. He'll be safe. And there he finds acceptance. Okay. Safe from they, vampires. They accept him as one of them. He finds he loves Jesus. Mm-hmm. He gives his own life. He still has the bad jaundice and the missing fingers and stuff. They give Ooh. him a new wardrobe. He gets like a green sweater and stuff and things. He's been wearing like the tattered clothes that he ran from the lab. Oh. And then, because this church is fighting, because the church, of course, we, Tim, we know the church is a good organization. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They do good yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. They help. They put him up in a new place to live. A little community they found where nobody knows about these robots in the future, mm-hmm. about the corruption going on in the cities, uh-huh. the shootouts happening everywhere. Yeah. A magical place. Nobody even knows where it is. Okay. It's like it's a closely kept secret. It's a little place called Springfield. Oh. And his neighbor the there is is the Simpsons. <laughs> and the first time he meets them, they go, "Oh, hey, neighbor!" But well, I can't do a Homer. Can you do a Homer? <laughs> no. You're the Simpsons okay. watcher. Oh, oh hey, neighbor. <laughs> Here's my Homer Simpson. I can only go, do. Oh, hey, neighbor. What's your name? And he says, because uh, he's so used oh, to it, he's uh, been told. Uh, yeah. He says, "Howdy." <laughs> oh, I thought he's going. He say. catches himself. Yeah. 
Oh. He goes, howdy, howdy ho, oh. neighbor Eno. Oh. My name is Flanders. Nice one. That was and a long he, walk. It's a long walk. <laughs> There's no revenge, even. <laughs> you got revenge on me. I got revenge on you for making <laughs> me watch this movie. So that's the story of how Dr. Howdily becomes beloved Springfield resident Ned Flanders. Phases right into a cartoon universe. Yep. Well, that's just because he's horribly jaundiced and oh, that's missing right. fingers. Oh, I totally missed yeah. the jaundice part. That's right. He's yellow. And lost his the eyes fingers. Are bu- just, oh, wow. His, his eyes are bugging out weird. Foreshadowing. Yeah, it's all there. Foreshadowing. Man, Tim, I, I, I actually... <laughs> I took the time to write something this time and did it on my list. I did too, I but I ruined mine. notes. My notes said, um, <laughs> how to is Flanders. That's, my... <laughs> that's where you started. That's, that's my whole thing. Wow. You know, it's funny that you mentioned the church because uh-huh. when I ruined my story, when they confronted robot bugler, little, uh-huh. little chili iron. There's going to be a robot bugler. Good Lord. Well, that's my story. The robot said to take it mm-hmm. over. They'd taken over. They'd changed. Mm. Anyway, little, little Chili Iron jumped out of his horse suit and said, how about, uh-huh. how about some stigmata? And he stuck pencils through his hands. Anyway, thought you'd like that. Wow. I wrote that for Look, you, I, and I, I left it out. I did like that. That's good. Let's put that back in. Jim, that's really funny. I like that uh, little Chili Iron is like adept with stabbing things with pencils. <laughs> well, it's kind of his power move. I'm sorry I ruined it, everyone, but George made up for it. That was a, good, that was a long walk. For a Simpsons Long walk joke. for a short joke. Yep, for a Simpsons joke. But maybe that's what we'll do for now on. Maybe every episode will be the secret origin of Flanders. Who knows? Could be. Could be. Speaking of episodes, Tim. We got a, yeah, because this is the double. With the, Actually, it's double length. Do we have any mail? We're double, double length episode because next week is Thanksgiving. We have no mail. Do we have, do we have mail? No. All right. All right. Uh, you, 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 yeah, next week. We're not I got here a movie for next week. It's Thanksgiving. That's why this is double sized. You can next episode, you're right. Uh, and so we take that off and you can listen to an old episode. And it's hope- Might I suggest, actually, people, that you go listen to two old episodes in our skip week. Oh, greedy. Listen to The Legend of Boggy Creek and Boggy Creek Two, The Legend Continues, because the movie we're going to do upon our return because we always start a new year after Thanksgiving, Tim and I, because we're big turkey fans. Ooh. I need to make up for Boggy Creek too. You mean return? It's probably our worst return episode. To Boggy so, Creek. Bo- the return of Boggy Creek, whatever it is. Yes. That was probably the worst episode we've ever done. It's such no. a garbage movie. I hated it. I, I, the episode was good. Yes. The movie was terrible. It's not about the movie, George. It's about the so time. I want to redeem. With you. I, oh, thanks. Man. <laughs> I want to redeem though Arkansas, Fook, Arkansas, and the creature that makes his home. That's not Big Bay Tai. Fuck that shit. Big Bay Tai was so the code I'm name doing... the CIA gave Big. That makes sense. Or the Secret Service is a good <laughs> So the movie I'm going to suggest I, that we're going to watch is The Creature from Black Lake. Yes, that's another one. Yes, it is another movie. Another <clears> one <throat> about the Fook monster, a.k.a. the Boggy Creek monster. This one, though, unlike Return to Boggy Creek, which was just terrible kids film, I actually have some high hopes for this one because the cinematographer is Mr. Dean Cundy. Dean Cundy is the cinematographer. He works with John Carpenter a lot. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that shot both Halloween and one of my favorite films of all time, The Thing. Yes. So even though this movie is probably garbage, it's going to be good looking garbage. And it's a, I think so. It's about the Fook monster. So it's currently available on Tubi, among probably other places. Mm-hmm. But we'll see you in two weeks for The Creature from Black Lake. Tubi and, uh, yeah. Tubi or not to be. Eh? Yeah. Eh? Email, eh? email us. Eh? Sidey Bimco with an E at gmail.com at the end i put it on the site that seti bimco exists on it's on instagram seti underscore bimco we're on threads and all those Are we? you can listen to us anyways well i'm on threads yeah i put that's right. seti bimco nice. on the threads i didn't put my name up there so everybody hope you all have a good thanksgiving if you're listening to this in the future uh never mind <laughs> yeah thanks that's you it. Pastor, catch up we back talk too long. Like, hey, you know, okay yeah we talked too long goodbye all Is right that it? I guess so. Okay. What, do we have a sign-off for this show? It's, it's called Goodbye, George. Yeah, I say. Bye, Tim. Goodbye, goodbye George. This is Martin. This has been a Pity Party Line production. Party Line. It's a party line. No backing. No backup. I don't know what's happening. Except for this. I know he's not on an ongoing program. Something in the molecular memory of the chassis alloy. It's affecting the brain matrix. 
How so? He's programming himself. He's got more potential than we ever dreamed. Oh, God. The brain matrix. It's modeled after your own lower brain functions, without mm -hmm. the higher functions to control mm -hmm. A brain without a heart, a conscious without recognition, a will without a soul.